Transfer transactions are a convenient way to show the flow of cash from one account register to another. Moreover, they save time because you only have to enter one transaction to indicate what the transactions in both accounts. In older versions of Quicken, you could initiate a transfer either via the menu commands or you could actually do it within the transaction itself. For example, let's say I'm paying my Chase credit card from my checking account. Let's put $1,000 in here. And what I do is I just put the other account name in brackets and that would make this a transfer transaction. Notice if I record it here, an equal and opposite transaction occurs in my Chase MasterCard register. It's important to note that transfer transactions are always going to be identical. You can't just change one side of the transaction. For example, let's say I change this to $250 and record it. If you notice, the opposite transaction will automatically be updated. Now that's the general concept of transfers. Let's go over and see how it's done in Quicken Essentials because it's a little bit different. Notice I have an American Express account here and I'm running a balance. And I'm going to pay this balance off through Andy's checking account. I'll select that in the sidebar. Create a new transaction. And start filling it out. American Express. You don't have to put anything in for a category. But I personally like to use transfer for all my transfer transactions. Go through. And here's where the big difference is. There's a transfer column now in Quicken Essentials, and that's where you enter the other account's name. In this case, it's American Express. And I enter the amount, 1,544 cents. Record this transaction, and you'll see the little arrow. And if you go over to the American Express account, you'll see the equal and opposite transaction there, and the resulting zero balance. If you go into the reports, let's just use a category summary for the last month, you won't see these being listed in the money in or money out section. The reason being is that, again, they're equal and opposite transactions, so they basically cancel each other out and they won't mess up your reports. So far, in this example, I've used transfers to pay off a credit card. Obviously, transfers can be used for a lot of different reasons. Moving, let's say, money from your savings account to your checking account, or if you got a split transaction at your grocery store and you get some cash back, moving that to your cash account, or even in a paycheck, let's say you're moving some money to an investment account. You can use transfers for pretty much any place that you're moving money from one account to another. But the reason I specifically pointed this out for credit cards is because one common question is, is how do you actually deal with credit cards? And some people are confused with that. Let's go back to the file I was using earlier. If you notice, I have actual accounts for the credit cards versus the checking accounts. And that's really what you want to do. If you've got a credit card, you should really set up a separate account where you can either manually enter the transactions or you can download them. That way, transactions will actually categorize for every individual transaction where the money is spent. That way you can track your cash flows. And then when you're ready to pay the bill, all you have to do is go over to your checking account or whatever account you use to pay it and make the simple transfer transaction as I showed earlier. The reason I mention this is that it never ceases to amaze me how many people refuse to track their credit card in Quicken, but instead will make a single payment transaction and split it out. They'll go through their paper statement and start breaking everything down and tabulating everything by different categories manually. Uh, you certainly can do that if you want to, but it's not the most efficient way of doing it. If you manually enter transactions, transfers are pretty straightforward. If you manually enter download to match, again, it's pretty simple. If for some reason they don't auto match, you just manually drag to match. The people who are going to be most confused are those who download transactions only. Let's take a look here. Right here I've got my Chase credit card and it's showing the actual payment that I made of $352 and it doesn't have a category. This is the information being sent from the bank. Now if I go over to the checking account, I'll see the same payment but it's labeled as credit card payment. I guess that's what my checking account and my bank wanted to send down. What ends up happening is if I go into the category summary, since these categories do not match, I'm going to see things as being money in and money out. The numeric amounts will end up being zero, but you'll see this as being money in and out. It's kind of a hassle. It's not too hard to fix, though. What you want to do is go into, let's say, the checking account. and We'll edit this transaction. And I want to change this to transfer because, if you remember, I like all my transfer transactions to have that category. And in the transfer field, I'll enter the Chase credit card account that will indicate this is now a transfer transaction. 
record. And for the people, don't be alarmed. You're going to see, oh my goodness, it looks like a duplicate. Don't worry about this. Just deal with it as any manually entered transaction that does not match. Drag to match. And if you go into the category summary, you'll see nothing in money in or money out, and your balances are zero.